Welcome back to the AtScale Cloud Migration course. My name is Dan Showolf. You've now seen and learned how AtScale helps you embrace cloud transformation without business disruption. In this video, Chris Oshiro, Vice President of Sales Engineering, will explain how to build business-centric data models using the AtScale Design Center and why it's important to have a business-centric model that is decoupled from your business intelligence tools. Additionally, Chris will explain the importance of a virtualization strategy that does not require data movement. Hi, my name is Chris Oshiro, VP of Sales Engineering here at AtScale. And today's session is about building business-centric models under the theme of AtScale Cloud Migration. So a quick shout out to Mike Westland on the pre-sales team for curating a lot of today's content. So what does business-centric models have to do with cloud migration? You know, typically when I speak to uh, customers and prospects about cloud migrations, they, they think about the technical ramifications. Things like, which cloud platform should I go to? What are the security implications of moving data to the cloud? Uh, I have to repurchase software. I have an ETL movement of data. I have latency issues um, after I move the data over. But what about, what about the business problem? So, in today's demo, we're gonna review how AtScale allows us to answer some complex business problems with a data fabric that obfuscates the underlying data platform, but really more importantly, it centralizes the business logic in one data service so all your BI tools can consume it. So it's not just about virtualizing a data source or querying the data where it lies, those things, those things are important, but to be a true semantic layer, uh, you have to incorporate the business requirements. So, in today's example, we're going to review how AtScale allows sales, in this example, to roll up into separate yet related entities. So you have a zip code that can belong to multiple territories. The business wants to see sales by territory, by zip, by even area, uh, even though they're not necessarily all aligned one to one. So you can see that bridge zip table over to the right where zip codes align to multiple. Uh, so sometimes a measure is not even captured at certain dimensions. So for example, um, your targets are not necessarily uh, aligned to zip code, but they might be aligned to area. Uh, but when you roll up all these numbers, you can't have a different opinion. You really have to have one single truth. So while this is an example of sales and retail, there are common examples in all verticals. So insurance has per member per month. Uh, customer 360s have um, different kind of measures across different competing channels. Uh, supply chain will have different warehouses, routes, destinations, a lot of commonality, and a lot of differences as well. So from a, from a data evolution perspective, data and the tools have evolved. And with the evolution, we have multiple versions of the truth. And increasingly, we have this truth uh, question. So at that scale, we're going to define that business logic once, and we're going to give it access to all the BI tools. So I'll show you one more slide, and if you've been uh, monitoring this course, this will be kind of common to you. Uh, but quick reminder, right, the at scale architecture really is what makes this all uh, very possible. So we can support all the multiple cloud data strategies, support BI tools in the context of SQL and MDX. And, and in this example, MDX is really important here, uh, and it's because of the way a lot of these problems need to be calculated. So let's go over to the demo. Okay, we're gonna be spending our time in this particular model. This is our, uh, our advanced modeling um, uh, schema, if you will. It has several measures, several fact tables. So you can see the tables here that are in blue represent targets, sales targets, sales targets at areas. You have sales facts, uh, a number of dimensions that are common. So for example, you have things like product and time dimensions here in the middle. Product and time is common to all things, both uh, targets and actuals. Um, but then the actual facts may align to certain zip codes and territories, and you might have targets aligned to area. So there's different um, competing, uh, um, competing uh, measures, some competing uh, dimensions, and some that are very common. Within those measures, you have to be able to roll these measures up appropriately. So as a quick example, if we bring up something like our, our sales target, You'll notice that at scale allows us to not just do summarizations, but we have the ability to handle uh, some unrelated dimension handling. So if you have a measure 
uh, that is represented within uh, a, a zip code or a territory, but not an area, you want to be able to handle that properly. So the ability to handle uh, that type of measure in, in the way that the business understands it is critical. And also from a zip and territory, if you remember the example on the slide, uh, you want to be able to map that many to many relationship. So we have something like a bridge table inside of AtScale that allows us to take a zip code and associate it appropriately to different levels of, um, of aggregation. So let's move over to the tools. We're going to start here uh, in Excel, right? So all three of these measures, by the way, are filtering down on a specific product and month year. And check out here on the left hand side, the zip. So we have a number of sales units that are sold in individual zip codes. And if you were to add up all of these numbers, you're going to find that the, uh, the result is 550, right? So you'll probably take a moment to add those up. Uh, but remember that, that bridge table we were talking about? Zip codes can roll up into different territories. So when you look at those same sales units by territory, you get these numbers. But if you were to add all these up, so let me pull up my calculator here. You notice that if you took 220, 223, 175, et cetera, the number that you get up is, uh, is actually 770. But that scale is clever enough to be able to allocate this appropriately and know that this is actually 550. It does that because that scale is able to send individual queries for grand totals versus rolling up to individual territories. So this is really critical. The other point that you should notice here is this third uh, report over here on the right hand side where we're looking at territories, sales units, and sales targets, and they're being organized by area. So in this case, we have an area north and an area south, and you have territory one and two associated to north, and you have three and four to the south. You'll notice though we have units and targets for those territories, but because targets were never associated to area, at scale smart enough not to aggregate it. This is all due to server side calculation and it's really important that you're able to do that so that you add up what you need to. And again, notice that this number is correct and you don't add up where you shouldn't. The other thing to notice here is I'll show you the, the data definition inside of, uh, inside of Excel and our field list shows up as a pivot table. So you'll notice that I have, you know, sales target, uh, filters on product and, and time dimensions, zip and sales unit. This definition of data, again, is presented as a, as a pivot table to the Excel users, and it's going to look a little bit different in different tools. So if we switch over to Tableau. Tableau is a, another kind of great example of not just having a nicely defined data service. If you look here on the left hand side, our data service is exactly the same. Um, Tableau can connect to AtScale in both MDX and SQL mode. And this is really important because when you connect Tableau to AtScale in MDX mode, then AtScale is again smart enough to understand or Tableau then becomes smart enough to understand that it shouldn't aggregate these individual numbers. It should actually calculate grand total separately as 550. Critical here is I've actually um, uh, displayed the summary tab. And in the summary tab, if you left it up to Tableau, Tableau we would think that the sum is actually 770. 770 is the client side aggregation. This number would have been wrong. So the fact that we can split this up and look at the grand total in a smart way is how we make Tableau even smarter of a, of a BI tool. And then finally, let's take a look at what this, what this looks like in Power BI. All of course, we're all looking at the same data definition. So first thing is you bring your attention here to the right hand side. Power BI is displaying at scale with measures and dimensions, some dimensions that are, are within hierarchies, some that are not, right? And we're looking at the same kind of calculations, again, zip code, territory, uh, and a chart of territory and zip. Uh, numbers are consistent, same kind of calculations. You can even take a look at an individual territory, for example, territory three, and you can see the Power BI is showing us that we have two zip codes for territory, uh, it's highlighting the appropriate bar. It's showing you the number appropriately. And if we were to look at territory four, same thing, right? So really critical here that we have a consistent data definition across multiple BI tools that can connect in SQL or MDX 
And MDX generally gives us the smarter answers when we deal with subtotals and grand totals. That ability for AtScale to support different dialects for different BI tools gives your organization the ability to have centralized IT governance in, in those strategies, maintain that single definition of, of truth, and still be able to leverage all of these new data platforms that are coming to the cloud and on-prem. But this migration of cloud, if you're going to do it, you're going to want to have that intelligence that AtScale provides. So thank you very much and looking forward to the next session. To summarize, AtScale allows you to answer complex business problems with a single virtualized data layer that sits between your data platforms and BI tools, providing you with the agility to create the analytics stack that best fits your company's needs. In our next video, we will be discussing security and what AtScale does to help protect your data. See you soon.